Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. I'm quite excited about today's video because I'm revisiting the balloon casting technique. You may have seen one of my older videos in which I cast epoxy resin in balloons and I got some really interesting and beautiful results with that. But I really wanted to see what would happen if I tried casting aquacast casting compound inside a balloon. I just wondered how it would turn out, so that's what today's video will be about. It was quite a journey of discovery, so stay tuned till the end to find out what worked and what didn't work, and enjoy the video! Here's what you're going to need. First of all, most importantly, a latex party balloon. Then something to grip the neck of the balloon to stop the air escaping. This is designed for things like sandwich bags and things like that. You don't have to use one of these, but I find that this one works really well. I'm not sure where it was from. You can probably buy them in the supermarket and they're really handy and it just clips closed. You will also need a stirring stick. I use this spatula. It works really well because it bends a little bit at the end and you can really squash against the side of your cup and get rid of any lumps. I have 250 grams of aquacast powder and 87 grams of water in a silicon jug and that's what I'm going to be mixing it all in. The silicon jug works really well for this. Also a balloon valve stopper thing. I don't know the exact name for them, but you put them in the top of the balloon and it stops the air escaping and it works perfectly for this project. You can also blow the balloon up while that's in, which is really good. And to go with that, you need just a little bit of cling film from the kitchen to wrap around it and that will stop the aquacast from sticking to the balloon valve. That's quite an important step, which I discovered the hard way. And I almost forgot, another thing you will need is a bottle with quite a thin neck like this one. Uh, it doesn't have to be the same as this one, but you get the idea, don't you? And if it's a, one that you can squeeze as well, that's even better. Because once the excess aquacast is cured, you can just squeeze it and it shake off the flakes of aquacast and then use the bottle again. So, right, I've just poured the powder into the water and I'm going to give it a really good mix. One of the reasons I love Aquacast is because it's just like the two-part casting compounds which come with the liquid and the powder, but the um, properties that you would get in a two-part casting compound have been fused into the powder, so you don't need the thick liquid that you get with the two-part compounds. And because of that, because you're mixing it with water, it's so much easier to mix and any lumps dissolve nice and quickly. But just in case, what I'm doing with my spatula here is really pressing it against the sides and the bottom to try and catch any lumps that are in there and squash them away. And then once it's mixed, you can carefully pour it into the bottle. It helps if you've got a steady hand, but if you haven't, you could maybe get a funnel that would fit the bottle and that might make it easier for you. I did notice a couple of lumps there that I'd missed, but it doesn't really cause a problem in this project. Next, I blew up my balloon and compared it to the other vase that I'd made. I wanted it to be bigger than the other one. So I was just checking that I'd got it to be around the right size. And once I got it to the right size, I put that orange clip on that I showed you at the beginning, just to keep it blown up while I do the next step. Right, now I'm ready to add the balloon to the bottle and it's just a case of pulling it down over the neck of the bottle and making sure it's gone down over all the threads on the neck. And then you can take off the orange clip. And there I'm just making sure it's gone all the way down. Right, once the balloon's on, just turn it all over and let the aquacast pour out of the bottle into the balloon. And there's no rush 
give yourself enough time for the all the aquacast to pour out as much as possible give the bottle a good squeeze like i said before it helps if you've got a squeezy bottle and yeah the thing is with aquacast you've got a good long working time so there's no panic about being really quick so then put the orange clip back on so that you can remove the bottle so that orange clip was very handy and quite essential actually in the end and I've just had a look on Amazon and you can actually get them from there so I will put a link in the video description. So once the clip's on you just remove the bottle. It does leave a little bit of a mess that you'll need to wipe up because obviously there'll be some aquacast left in the neck and so you just need to wipe as much of that away as you can. It's not really a problem, it's just a bit messy. And then once you've done that, you can put your balloon valve in there and yeah, then that's all ready. Right then, I know for a fact, because I've done a, vi a balloon video like this before with resin, I know that a lot of people are going to say, what happens if the balloon pops? Well, I don't think it would. There's not much surface tension. I haven't blown it up very much. But if you're worried about it, what you can do is what I'm doing here. I've taken a big piece of cling film and I'm just wrapping the balloon in the cling film. And then if it did pop, it's not going to go everywhere. So now all you have to do is start rotating it and you will have to keep rotating it for about 25 minutes. You need to be quite gentle and you need to be quite thorough. It needs to be evenly spread so you will need to keep tipping it from side to side. You want it to go into the neck of the balloon but also at the base so keep tipping it and try to distribute the aquacast evenly. You've kind of got to imagine what it will be doing inside and imagine where it's going all the time and think about where it's got the most and where it's got the least, try to get it even. And at this point, I'm going to tell you that if you're faint-hearted and scared of failure, this project isn't for you. Although my very first one worked perfectly and it was my best one, uh, I, <laughs> I didn't film that one because I was just seeing if it would work. And it worked. It worked perfectly. And then to make the video, I actually had a few breakages because I hadn't distributed the plas the aquacast evenly enough and there were thin parts in there. So yeah, for this one, I used more aquacast than I did in my original one to make sure it was really good and strong. So yeah, that's your warning. Don't do this if you're scared of it going wrong because it probably will, you know, it's a journey. It's a journey to get it right. Even though my first one worked, then I did have a few fails before I got my final one for the video. You need to be quite patient. <laughs> so after a while, probably about 20 minutes, you'll start to feel a change. The surface of the balloon will start to feel firmer and you'll have to start being a little bit more gentle because as it starts to set, you don't want it cracking. So treat it like an egg. Pretend you're rolling an egg. Just be gentle with it and you'll be all right. And then all of a sudden it will start to kind of lose its balance, almost as though it's puddling in places. And there was a toy that we used to have as a child. What are they called? Weebles. And you say weebles wobble and they don't fall down <laughs> because they were weighted, weren't they? And then you would put them down and they would just go back to the right position. Well, it felt a little bit like that because it was getting heavier in some places as it was suddenly starting to cure. It lost its balance and it became quite difficult to roll. You'll know exactly what I mean if you have a go. It's hard to explain any other way, but yeah, <laughs> it was like a weeble. Um, yeah, and then all of a sudden it gets really warm and starts to go hard. It does happen very suddenly and then there's no point turning it anymore because there'll be nothing left in there that is liquid enough to turn. It will have gone solid. So yeah, that's the best way I think I can describe it. And then once it had gone solid, I just left it for about an hour before I took the balloon off. Right, let's take the balloon off. 
You need a sharp pair of scissors. Mine weren't very sharp. I need some new ones. I never have enough pairs of scissors. Anyway, I use my sharp-ish pair of scissors and just cut through the neck and started kind of trying to tear the balloon apart. I didn't want to scratch the um, vase. So that's why I kept just pull it, stretching the... Um, balloon and then snipping a little bit more the balloon does not stick to the aquacast it comes off the surface of the aquacast no problem at all it's just a fact the fact that you've got to stretch it and then snip it and just keep doing that until you can completely release it that takes the time but yeah all of a sudden it will come off it's really hard to capture on camera, but the surface of this vase is just so beautiful. It's smooth because of the, you know, the latex being so smooth against the aquacast. And it's just like, it just feels like an egg, but a smooth egg. It really, really, it really is beautiful. I just can't, <laughs> I can't explain it well enough to, you know, to, for you to understand it. You really need to have a go at this. Anyway, let's talk about the neck. As you can see, it's solid at the moment. Well, it looks solid. What had happened was it had, um, the aquacast had gone against the valve that was blocking the balloon. And so that end bit was sealed. But luckily, I sanded it because it needed sanding anyway to get it to the angle that I wanted it. And once I'd got past the thick part at the top, it was okay. You know, it, there was a hole. I found the hole after a while. So yeah, just sanding it for a long time to get it just how I want it. I wanted it at an angle like my other one. And yeah, it's just a case of keeping on going with it. Now, if you find that your neck of your balloon vase is solid all the way down, you can drill it just carefully, you know, use a drill. Don't be scared of it. It won't shatter like ceramic wood. It's very forgiving is this aquacast. Another thing you can do if you wanted to make a bowl and if you've got a Dremel with one of those grinder tools, you can actually cut it in half. I've done that with one of mine as well. Um, yeah, it, that works too. So yeah, use a drill if you don't have a hole in the neck and it will be fine. Mine's a little bit uneven, but it's all part of the, you know, the natural look of the whole thing. Right then, let me tell you a bit of a story. This is my first attempt, which sadly I wasn't filming. I wish I had filmed it because everything went perfectly. When it was cured and we'd got to the step that you've just seen, the part that we've just seen, I decided to add some more aquacast inside to strengthen it. And I decided to colour it blue so that there was a little bit of contrast at the neck where you could see inside. But as I'd poured the aquacast in there and I was turning it just in the same way as we did before, the blue started leaching through to the surface of the vase in its weakest spots. I suppose and I got this beautiful pattern appearing like magic and I was so thrilled and I couldn't wait to do it again you know with the camera on <laughs> to show you but it didn't happen it didn't happen with today's vase I don't know why I think it's because I used more aquacast and the walls were thicker but yeah it was sad it's a gamble it could work for you and then again it might not but I did find another way of colouring it and we'll get onto that in a little while. Okay, with that said, I'm going to show you the next step. Even though it didn't work this time in the same way as it did for the first one, I'll show you how I did it and then hopefully it will work for you and then you'll get some really nice results. So I measured out 70 grams of water and 200 grams of aquacast powder and gave it a really good mix. Then I took the beautiful periwinkle blue pigment from Homeware Designs and added a generous amount. I really do love the pigments from Homeware Designs. They work so well in Aquacast and the range of colours is amazing. I really do love this periwinkle blue. And yeah, I added a lot and I really wanted to make sure the you know, the colour of the aquacast was quite intense so that there was a good chance that the pigment would bleed through to the surface of the vase. 
That was the, you know, that was the idea. Anyway, it didn't quite work as I've told you. But if you want it to work, this is the way to do it and just hope for the best. I think it really does depend on the thickness of the walls, you know, of your vase. Um, I think mine was just too thick. So if you can get yours quite thin without it breaking... You know, that's the way ahead. That's the way I did my first one. And it, it worked so well. But yeah, this was just a bit too thick. Anyway, once I'd mixed it up, I was very careful in pouring it into the vase. And once it was all poured in, I turned it in just the same way as before. And yeah, I didn't need to do it for quite as long this time. It cured a lot faster. I'm guessing it was something to do with the water soaking into the walls of the vase and so yeah it just cured faster than it did in the balloon and yeah once that was cured we were ready for the next step so now you're probably wondering how it's going to stand up without falling over well let me show you it's the next day and i'm going to sand it you should always leave it a day really before you do your sanding um I don't always do that. Sometimes it's easier to do it when it's just been cured. But I waited a day and I got this big piece of medium grit sandpaper and I'm just rubbing the vase in a circular motion until the base becomes flat. And, you know, if you want it to be a big flat base, do it for longer. If you're not too worried and you just want a little base, just do it for less time. It's up to you. And you might have noticed that that spillage that I had on the neck has gone. That's because I did some more sanding just to sand away the bit where I'd spilled a little bit. I think I actually did it even more, you know, after afterwards because there was still a little bit of blue there. It's not difficult to just go back with your sanding block and do a little bit more sanding. Right then, because my initial way of doing it to get the blue pattern hadn't worked on this one, I wanted to try a different way of getting a blue design on there. So I thought I'd try something else out. I took some water in a silicon jug and added some more of the periwinkle pigment into the water. And then it was just a case of dipping the vase into the water and seeing what would happen. I found that I had to keep adding some more pigment. At first it just wasn't pigmented enough and it you know, wasn't making much difference on the vase. But after a while it started to make a difference and I just repeated the process about three times to get a good coverage. If I did this again, I would choose a larger container for the dipping because I had to take, when I took it out, I had to make sure it didn't touch the walls of the jug because it was wiping off the colour. Uh, yeah, so a bigger pot next time would be better. And also, so I'm not wasting the pigment, once I'd finished with this, I poured it into an old water bottle so that next time I'm mixing up some aquacast, which I want to be blue, I can just use the pigmented water and then I'm not wasting all that lovely pigment. So yeah, there we go. It was all very much trial and error. And once that had dried, I decided I wanted to try it from the top to see what would happen. And I also thought it would be a good idea to add some blue pigment to the top of the water without mixing it. See if I could get some dark patches in there. And that actually worked quite well. I liked what happened with that. You do need to have a paper towel or a baby wipe handy. If there's any drips going down that you don't want to be there, you can just wipe them off. But yeah, I liked the way it turned out. And actually, after filming, I did give it one more dip to try and get another one of those lines going across. And so, yeah, there's a, that's another way of colouring it rather than the original way that I did it if it doesn't work for you. So it was quite a lot of fun as well, I've got to say. Right, a couple of days later, when they'd completely dried out, it was time to seal them. Now, you've got an op a few options, actually, when it comes to sealing your Aquacast. You can use the Hydroflow Sealer from Elichem Resins, which is where you get the Aquacast from, or you can use wax. I'm actually using this Coconut Oil and Soy Wax Sealer from Homeware Designs for this one. I just wanted a very, very... um 
subtle way of protecting it without changing you know the quality of the surface um with the aquacast sealer that would have worked really well not the aquacast sealer the hydroflow sealer that would have worked well but it's more of a liquid and you've got to um, be careful not to get smear marks on there. And I didn't want to risk that on this. So that's another reason why I went with the wax. Plus, Homeware Designs had only just sent me this. And I wanted to see what it worked like. And it's so subtle, you can't actually see where you've been on it. And so that's good in a way. But it did make it tricky to make sure I got everywhere. And so I let that dry and I actually gave it another coat afterwards, about an hour later. And then you can just buff it up to make sure it's all nice and smooth and not shiny, but silky. I'll call it silky, the finished result. And I did really like the finished result, I've got to say. Oh, and I'm just using an earbud there, just on the inside to make sure that's sealed as well. Right then, if you're just going to be using your vases as ornaments and not actually as vases, you can leave them as they are. But if you want to be putting water inside your vases, as you know, I'm calling it a vase, so I've got to go through with the whole, th <laughs> the whole theory of possibly having water in there, you're going to need to coat the inside. And all I've done here is mixed up some epoxy resin. I've chosen an old one that needed using and it had gone a bit yellow, but it doesn't matter because it's going on the inside and it's a good way of using it up. So you just mix up some epoxy resin, pour it into the vase and I would say turn it every 20 minutes or so to make sure it's getting a good coverage before it starts to cure. And then the inside of your vase will be completely waterproof. So there we have it. In my attempt to show you how to make an ornamental bud vase using a balloon, I've actually ended up with three vases. And yeah, it was a lot of hard work to get there and to find out what works and what doesn't work. But hopefully by doing that, I've helped you to learn what to do and what not to do. And my husband has actually told me that in future, I've got to film my very first attempt at something, even if I'm just practicing, because it's not the first time when my first attempt has been my best one. But never mind, I was able to explain how I did it, wasn't I? So <laughs> anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you again next week. Thank you for watching and bye for now.